Yo, what's up, ugly? I got five more awkward hip hop moments to go over with you. Like and subscribe, it's Primsa Cinema. Hurry up, like, subscribe. Also, I'm just joking, you're not ugly. You good looking. We're going over five more awkward hip hop moments from the past. I guess this is a series now. Go watch the other video too, after this one. It's very good. But since you played football, your favorite position was center. <laughs> Starting things off here, we got Orlando Brown and his various misadventures, I guess you would call it. Mainly, I want to talk about this umbop moment. I use this meme a lot. It's only right. I had the num case. <laughs> Legs this way, you go. <laughs> Back in 2016, former child star Orlando Brown did an interview with All Def that went pretty viral. Mostly because he was tweaking off whatever this substance is. I don't even know what this nigga's on, bro. We just want to thank Orlando for being our special guest today. He came all the way to chop it up with us and let you know the truth. Bro, the hosts are starting it off awkward as hell. She's like reading it off her phone and shit. She's just holding the phone the whole time. Ain't no table in here. He got to sit his water on the floor. You had the poor Orlando. You had the homeless Orlando. Now you have the funny Orlando. Now you got the smile Orlando. And it's like, goddamn Orlando. He keeps randomly singing and shit. Bro is really tweaking the whole interview. It's not even funny, actually. This nigga need help. Oh. I did some coffee. I, I did some coffee. It's America's fucking coffee. He starts doing a Lil Wayne impression. They ask him what's in his cup, and he does the worst Lil Wayne impression I've ever heard in my life. This nigga sound Chinese. What's in my cup is what's in my what's in my cup is what's in my cup. Yeah, we see a baby. You see, play that. Right? We don't do that. We don't do that. You may do that. Me, I don't do that. They doing these extreme close-ups, making it way funnier too. Y'all some assholes, bro. This shit not funny. I mean, Chinese Lil Wayne is pretty funny, you gotta admit. The host then bring up one of Orlando Brown's past interviews with Vlad TV. He kinda alluded to messing around with Raven Simone during his time working on That's So Raven. I mean, she gave me, and then I gave her some, I do up, I do up. Explain. And then the Okay. Uh, <laughs> imagine that as the clit, man. <laughs> Legs this way, you go. Uh, and then. Uh, 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 Isn't gonna keep calling it umbop? Recycling jokes, ass boy. It is kind of catchy a little bit. She gave me some umbop. Nah, that's stupid. Raven did a podcast a few years later where she kinda addressed it. She kept it classy though. She not paying attention to nothing this nigga says. He says crazy shit all the time. I let me know Brown. What's your thoughts on him? What'd you just say? Am I not allowed to say that? My thoughts on Orlando Brown. I think he's a very, very talented young man. OB. Period. <laughs> Done. No comment. He also claimed that Lil Bow Wow gave him some umbop as well. I mean, whatever, bro. Don't nobody give this nigga no more umbop. He's gonna tell the whole world, apparently. I ain't got a problem. Jay-Z, the rapper, tried to kill him at one point, according to him. He said it in one of his songs. Orlando Brown still makes music if you want to check it out for some reason. So yeah, this is technically hip-hop related. Shut up. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Shout out to Orlando Brown, though. Hopefully we see an Orlando Brown come back in the future. Last time I checked, he was trapped on Zeus Network doing a reality show called The Bad Boys Club, Texas. It's a bunch of gay niggas in a house fighting each other. It's barely a show at all. They don't play no mini games or eliminate nobody. Who was watching this? Besides me. Nigga, I got the, I got the sweets, nigga. I'm having a vision. Hold on. Mm, yeah, oh. yeah, but we all step out. We, we bad boys, bro. Oh my god. Next up, we got this DJ Academics versus a big Mensa incident. Mensa incident. Incident. I, I, I really, I really think you a bitch because it what, what's that? Because so in 2017, uh, DJ Academics and Joe Budden were hosting their hip hop podcast, the Everyday Struggle. They had Chicago rapper Vic Mensa on there as a guest, looking like motherfucking evil can evil. This racist ass, dumbass outfit. Now, but he comes on and he starts cooking DJ Academics and threatening to beat his ass and all that. DJ Academics, if you don't know, he had a series on YouTube called The War in Chirac. 
where he would investigate and report on all the street niggas in Chicago, basically. Vic Mensa evidently was not a fan. I did want to ask you about, <laughs> what, I'm sorry, you felt you were a little bit repulsed by the fact that so many people outside the culture of Chicago, they, were, they hyped up the music, not knowing that real lives were being affected, death, yeah. sin. Like, how did you, how did you feel about that? I, I wanted to slap you in your face. <clears throat> people exactly like you made a following off of clowning situations that we go through in real life and I, I think I, I, I really I really think you're a bitch because in what what sense? Because Bro said in what sense? That's a wild ass reply to you a bitch. That's the most hoish shit I've ever seen in my life. I'm not even joking. In what sense? No, he meant you a bitch in a good way. Like what other way can you interpret that? I, I, I really I really think you're a bitch because no. in what was that? Because DJ Academic's solution to the problem is just to blaze this nigga and pray to God he don't get smacked in the mouth. You know Joe Button ass ain't gonna help you. He's sitting there instigating the shit. You supposed to be his co-host, bro. Were we to be in a room, there's no cameras, there's no security, you see us, you wouldn't make no jokes. Would you make a joke? A joke if, about if, what? No, no you wouldn't. Okay, give me his hey, don't waste my camera time. He wouldn't make the joke. You wouldn't make the you joke. You wouldn't make the joke. I mean, I think they grew to understand that the content was not just negative. Right? No, it, it, was it, was, it was just negative, man. No, no, no. Like, making all these jokes. Oh, here's another Chirac Savage. Like, this guy's stupid. He messed with the Grim Reaper. Like, nigga, this is not a video game. Honestly, academics, you could probably take him, bro, if you tried. You ain't have to let him hold you to this extent. This nigga dressed like Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I mean, he might got hands, though. You grow up in Southside Chicago dressing like that, you probably got hands, actually. You asked him the question, by the way. You should have been prepared for smoke, DJ Academics. Bro said, I heard you were repulsed by computer niggas roasting your city. How you feel? Like, you're the main computer nigga roasting your city. Normally, I wouldn't glorify somebody getting bullied like this. Bro high key deserved this shit, though. Vic Mensa had nothing but solid points. There's no arguing this shit. As a former academics fan, he was talking super reckless, and it's kind of what drew me towards his content. I expected him to be able to stand on it though, even a little bit. Like him just reporting on the street shit wouldn't bother nearly as many people, I don't think. But that talking super reckless on the computer and clamming up in real life, people don't like that. Please be warned, the following story is very graphic in detail and the coonery involved is at maximum levels. I mean, nigga, what the fuck are you doing at a mall in midday in Chirac? Nigga, you should have been online shopping. I remember watching this show back when it first aired. The everyday struggle era is probably where I stopped watching academics. The Vic incident wasn't a random occurrence. Bro was constantly getting hold, like every episode, basically. Rest in peace to everyday struggle. I can't even find the full Vic Mensa episode. That's how dead this podcast is. It's crazy. This was like the biggest thing in hip hop for like four months. You know, academics might be ready for action now. I don't know. This was early on in his career before he unlocked the Hennessy perk, the Henny courage or whatever. Who knows? I think you could take him, bro. Let's set my cup and the mic. We don't do that. You may do that. Up next, we have one of the most uncomfortable roast sessions ever caught on film. You've probably seen this clip already. I personally watch this multiple times a year. If your cholesterol is 600, whatever, little mama. You probably shouldn't talk about sizes. No, you big on the radio. So this one takes place in 2018. This Atlanta radio station, V103, it's a radio station. It's technically hip hop related. I told you to shut the hell up. They got Cat Williams on for an interview one day, and by the end of it, he roasts his lady so thoroughly, her husband pulls up and tries to air out the whole radio station. Oh my God, he's got a heater. <laughs> Cat Williams is here doing the interview, trying his best to put his unfunny ass homeboy on. It's actually his interview. Red Grant is his name. He was in Leprechaun in the Hood. Remember that? I actually love that movie. A friend with weed is a friend indeed. Cat Williams is doing his usual stick talking down on all the other black comedians and he the king of all comedians. Tell me, what does it take to make a great special, sir? That only speaks to quantity. I, I do have more comedy specials than any comedian breathing or dead, so I understand the question. Seven more than Richard Pryor. Six more than Martin Lawrence. Because they're going to let you do your special, Gerard Carmichael, but nobody's going to watch it. They're going to let you be a star, Lil Rel, but you ugly. You can't tell me your favorite Tiffany Haddish joke. Why? Because she ain't done a tour yet. Comedian Wanda Smith is one of the radio hosts. During the whole Tiffany Haddish rant, she mentioned something about liking the movie Girls Trip. 
That's when things first start to get tense. He doesn't like her defending Tiffany Haddish, I guess. Tiffany Haddish. Ma'am, you could have Tiffany, had that role yeah. and everything that happened would have happened. I laughed from beginning to end. I felt like... I thought I it was a great like, script when mm -hmm. I saw it in 2004. Right. But people so, like real, I'm, and that's why they that like what her. They, they like they love real oh, because everybody's real. Then they try to switch topics, and they're discussing parenthood now. Wanda Smith asked Cat Williams if he cooks for his kids. I don't know. Maybe it's the way she asked or something. Maybe it was the Tiffany Haddish thing still. But yeah, he started cooking all right. You shouldn't have asked him that. I said seven, what they like. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. I'm I still said answering. what do they like? You, you Just you because think? you're a poor interviewer doesn't mean. <laughs> What's your favorite wait, wait, thing to wait, cook? Wait, wait, wait. Your boys, um, yeah. They like for me to I do a really nice broccoli. They like my broccoli and they love. Pick up your phone and see what it takes to make broccoli and tell me he doesn't say he doesn't say heat up water. You can't burn it because it's made in a pot of water. You don't, you don't know nothing about. You know what? Bro, that's hysterical. Broccoli. She obviously don't be cooking for her family. He got you there. Wanda Smith didn't appreciate the broccoli joke, so she swings back with this weak ass, forced ass joke about going to jail. I thought your ass was a comedian, Wanda Smith. Where the comedy? You good at heating stuff up. Uh, you're good at telling us about what's going on in jail. And here we get to the salon. All right, it's the People Station Viewer 3. Your hair is kind of... That That's not a perm. No, it is not. Nice lady. That's come, run, come run, come run one of your gnarled fingers. <laughs> they go back and forth some more. Wanda Smith is bombing. All her comebacks are ass. I feel hella bad for her, bro. She didn't even ask for this, really. She was trying to be nice to his ass the whole time. Everybody laughing at the broccoli joke triggered her or something. She should have just let it go. That weak ass jail comeback, you could have kept that. Calm no, no, no. Only down. one of us has twelve dollars worth of jewelry on. Okay. No, 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 no. If you want to have Wanda's jewelry, please uh, go to go Sit Go, go or Quick Come Trip at any cat. point. Come if you buy cat. two packs of Newport 100s, <laughs> they will give you everything Wanda has on. The interview pretty much ends there. Then I guess Wanda Smith calls her husband after to come and beat up Cat Williams. I'm not gonna lie, bro. If my wife got flamed that bad on the radio, I might have to crash out too. I feel you, bro. There's some footage of the altercation. You can see Wanda Smith and her husband posted up. Cat Williams and the husband argue for a bit. And allegedly the husband pulls out a gun. So Cat Williams is out of there immediately. I mean, Cat Williams was definitely being a little too snarky. He was picking on her a little too much. But nah, she's a comedian also. She should be ready for this. She ain't say nothing funny the whole time. Getting her husband involved and trying to make it a physical altercation, that's not cool. It's not that serious. Again, if you want to call yourself a comedian, you got to be ready for that. You got to have thicker skin or at least better comeback. Man, you're a strong like. black woman. <laughs> Is it okay for me to answer? Come on. You keep interrupting the answer. Oh Everyone can hear it. Next up, we got a super awkward throwback moment. I just discovered, actually. Thank you to whoever left the comment suggesting it. I couldn't find it a second time. My fault. But back around in 2009-ish, BET's 106 in Park was still showing music videos and doing countdowns and in the 2000s. They had these two hosts, Terrence J and Roxy. This was way after I stopped watching the show. Apparently they hosted this shit for like six years. That's surprising. I have no recollection of these people at all. Who the hell is this? Nah, I do vaguely remember this time of 106 in Park. I'm not sure what their usual chemistry was like. It's probably not like this though. The male host, Terrence J, is being super weird and passive aggressive for seemingly no reason. Like it seems kind of playful at first, he won't stop though. I don't know what his deal is. I can only find clips. I don't have the full episode for context. My fault. Everybody can see there's a, a teleprompter right there. It says Freestyle Friday at, at gmail. Not at bt.com. So I like B, I love bt.com. I'm happy you represent for your network, but it, it's at gmail.com. Freestyle Friday 106 at gmail.com. Yeah, can, matter of fact, can they bring back the uh, the thing at the bottom of the screens? Yeah, okay. Just so that people at home don't get twisted because you can't read today. Uh, number six video. Here's Birdman Lil Wayne. I run this, but I can read. Now, I'm not an expert, but this kind of saltiness, it almost seems like rejection. Like she denied him some umbop and now he's furious. Actually, I am an expert on that. Here, watch some more of it. I'm not tripping. This nigga is still going, bro. Talking about she need breath mints. Mints, Roxy needs breath mints. No, you don't. No, you do a little bit though. Can we do that during the commercial break? What? It's not that bad, but it's not that good. Uh, we listen, got we got- new history making, that's my read. I'm in the good zone. That's how you feel today. Yeah. 
I mean, it's, I didn't do it. You did. Uh, look, we got more 106 of Park on the way. Let's get these breath mints. Why can't you have a body more like Sierra, y'all? Why can't you have a body more like Nelly? Keep it locked. We got Dave, uh... David Banner. Don't you have some? This nigga messed up while reading the teleprompter. Cruel, cruel, ironic fate. It doesn't stop him though, at all. He's still holding on to that one time she messed up for some reason. What are you, negging her? Like you're in elementary school? Will you like her or something? More information. Uh, let me give them the email address. The email address is freestylefriday at gmail.com. Put it on the bottom of the screen. It should be on the bottom. Yeah, there it goes. Freestylefriday at gmail.com. I just wanted to help you before you messed up. Oh, again. This nigga messed up again. The email is freestylefriday106 at gmail.com. He said it wrong every time. That's technically way more mistakes on your part now. I can run this, but I can read. Roxy eventually just walks off and she doesn't come back. Now this nigga just standing there looking dumb as fuck. Were you purposely sabotaging the show? I'm so curious what his problem was. An audition in New York City is gonna be off the hook, all right? Roxy won't be there, she won't mess you up while you're doing it. Really? You're really feeling some type of way. No, I'm just playing, no, I'm just real talk. Go ahead. Go ahead. Rick Ross, yeah. Nelly, here I am. It's number two on the countdown, baby. In an effort to make things less awkward, Terrence J grabs the first person he sees and pretends they're the new co-host. Yeah, it's way less awkward now. Thank you. Yeah, you can be my new co-host right now. What's your name? Gabrielle. Where are you from? I'm from Hempstead. Was I too hard on Roxy? Huh? I wasn't too hard on her, right? No. No, see, I was just playing around. You're gonna be my co-host since some people won't act too sensitive with their jobs, all right? This joint hit number one four in four days. That means it's one of the fast- Again, he did it again. All right, bro, that's enough. I run this, but I can read. Shout out to 106 in Park. It's a legendary show. Shout out to Roxy. She hella bad. At least I think. This shit hella pixelated. I can't really tell. What was the hiring process like for this show? Like, who the hell are these people? Y'all couldn't have got somebody more charismatic? I mean, the show was already on his way out anyway, regardless of who the host was. Doesn't even matter. I'm from Hempstead. For the last entry, let's unwind a little bit. I got a fun, more lighthearted moment pulled up for you. It's Lil Webby struggling to read publicly. Louisiana rapper Lil Webby did an interview with The Breakfast Club back in 2013. It's actually an iconic interview. It's funny as hell. There's so many quotables. Lil Webby seems like a cool, genuine kind of dude. You should definitely go watch it. Let me get back to my original question about, about oh. I don't, I, don't, I don't really think nobody care, man. Afterwards, I'm guessing they asked him to record some drops or whatever they call it, where you promote the radio station. Now, I can't find any actual video footage. The audio itself is crazy. Bro was struggling damn near every word. DJ, DJ Envy, Angela Gee, and Saturday, my my God. Let me, let me read that for you. Doing what I do, what I do, what I do, and I'm doing it with my girl. DJ Envy, Angela Lee, Angela Yee. Damn. Hold up. DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlotte McGay. <laughs> DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlamagne, the guard. DJ, DJ Lee. Bro, you almost had it that time. That was good enough, honestly. You should have left it right there. But no, he keeps going and it's not getting any better. These not even hard names to pronounce. Maybe Charlemagne a little bit? This nigga high as hell or something. You trying to be funny or what? What the hell is so difficult about this? God damn, girl. Y'all got some names on that man. Hold up, DJ Envy, Angela Lee, and Charlemagne McGain. And you rocking with DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlotte your mate, Charlotte your mate. I, ain't, I don't think I'll never be able to say that right now. Hold on, say it one more time. Charlemagne. Charlemagne the God. Charlemagne the God. Who that is? All right, this shit not funny no more. It's kind of making me sad now. He really trying his hardest. He just can't do it. He legit never gets it right. Now, nah, he's a good sport about it. Shout out to Webby, bro. It seems like he's got a decent sense of humor. I mean, he was dead ass serious trying to read these names, but still. Angela Lee and Charlemagne McGain. That's it, though. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with a brand new Hood Cinema, Original Gangsters, Scarface Review coming, CB4. Make sure y'all like and subscribe. Crimson Cinema is back. Don't miss all the Hood adventures.